Let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, uh, today we are going to just do a welcome webinar for you guys for your uh, Spanish Wine Scholar course. The um, Once we get done, I'll put this up online. You guys can rewatch it if you need to, but we'll talk about that here in just a minute. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rick Fisher. I am the uh, Spanish programs director for the Wine Scholar Guild. I also created the Spanish Wine Scholar program um, about three years ago. And um, I also am a certified educator for uh, the regions of Rioja, Sherry, and Cava. Um, I have traveled quite a bit through Spain. So as we go through the course, I will try to kind of give you guys some insight from places that I've actually been fortunate enough to travel to. I know some of you I saw from the um, the exchanges on, and on our instructor Q&A forum, which I love that you guys have been responding to that. Um, and so uh, I know some of you have actually spent some time in Spain. Some of you are heading to Spain. So I think that you're going to really find that this course is a really great way to really prepare you for that. Now, I will be joined uh, from time to time from um, with a uh, you'll have another instructor here, Sasha DeJanes. And uh, I live in San Diego, California. Sasha is actually just up the road from me about an hour in Orange County, California. And um, Sasha is fantastic. She is a uh, stage one Master of Wine student as well um, and has been teaching Spanish Wine Scholar for a couple of years, uh, both in person in Orange County as well as online uh, with me. So uh, generally, if there's a couple of weeks that I'm out because I'm traveling, then Sasha will step in. And I also want to encourage you guys, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to drop them into the chat box, and I will answer all your questions as we go through, as, as well as uh, if you hold anything till the end. So most of you are probably already well aware how to access the, um, the course, but just to real give you a real quick, just uh, make sure you log into the Wine Scholar Guild site. You all have your logins, um, and you log in as you would with your username and password. Click on my account and then jump over to my online courses and then to your Spanish Wine Scholar course. Now, for some of you, this may be the first course. I know some of you have probably taken courses before. Uh, so for those of you who, if this is your first course, I would highly encourage you to take some time um, during the week and just kind of spend some time looking through the course and familiarizing yourself with it. That's what today is really meant to do. So I'll give you some really good pointers for that. And then you'll be able to explore on your own. Now, once you get into the course, you will see a welcome uh, message from me. And you're going to see a list of a, of a bunch of resources for you guys. Now, as we go through, the top section of those resources are going to be things that um, you'll actually use from time to time. Number one, uh, WSG announcements, that would be just used by us. We rarely have ever used that, so uh, don't even worry about that. The instructor Q&A form, this is really probably one of the two most important things for you guys. So this is where you can ask me questions from stuff that you're reading um, about the materials, about content, about something from a webinar that maybe you didn't think about when you were when you were watching it before. And that's and then I do my best to respond to those within uh, 24 hours for you guys. So you generally have those all um, very quickly. And everybody gets the benefit of seeing those. So when that one question one goes out, everybody sees it. So sometimes some people have the same questions. The next would be the technical forums and assist uh, technical questions and assistance forum. So if you're running into issues with like, for example, you can't get the ebook open or it looks funny or something like that, and you can't figure it out, just click on that one and send a message and then we will have somebody respond to you as well. And then finally, uh, this is the uh, the student forum, and this is where you guys can actually engage with each other. And um, you can ask each other questions, you can share information. I've had classes where people set up tasting groups, where they set up study groups, and they coordinate through that as well. So lots of options for you guys to stay, stay connected to me as well as to each other. <clears throat> now, I've added, uh, you guys are the first full course that are getting the benefit of a number of new resources that I've added to the system. Uh, first off, we do have the, the study manual in ebook, 
And you can act, it's pretty easy to go into. All you do is click on it, you click enter and it opens it up into a format. So if you're traveling for whatever reason, or if you're at the beach or whatever, and you wanna read through the manual, you can do that without taking your actual manual with you. Especially for some of you guys who uh, maybe have signed up very, very recently for the course and have not received your manual yet, at least you have a way to get started into it as well, okay? Uh, then there's also, and we'll talk about this a little bit, suggested wines, need to know appellations, we'll talk about those. Uh, Spanish wine scholar errata. So the, the manual itself is a couple of years old, and over the course of time, we do find that things have changed, uh, or we find a mistake here and there. And so I actually have two documents in the, in the, um, in the portal for you guys. The first is the errata. This is testable material. What I always encourage students to do is to go in, to download it, and to make any changes in your manual so that when you're reading your manual, you actually have the current information, okay, and the correct testable information. Now, the second document that I put in there is, uh, you'll see it's called Manual Changes and Regional Updates, and this is not testable. This is actually designed for uh, just because a lot of things, Spain is an incredibly dynamic country with changes, and so what you're seeing, there are a lot of things that are happening in the country that have happened since this manual was, was um, uh, published and before the next one will be published. And so this is a way for me to keep you guys updated on current Spanish wine law. Uh, I generally go through those at the end of our weekly presentation so that you don't confuse something that is non-testable with something that is testable. But I really do, you know, this is not just about you getting through and passing an exam. This is about you really embracing and understanding Spanish wine and Spanish wine law. And so that's why I really, I put this, uh, this document together for you guys to kind of stay up to date on those types of things. We also have two folders of maps. Uh, the first are the are the actual maps that you will see in your manual. Uh, you can download those individually and print them out if you want, um, as well as blank maps. Now you will not have map um, questions on your exam, like you won't have to you won't see a map and have to fill in a region. But a lot of people actually really like to kind of create their own study tools by downloading these blank maps and drawing in them. So those are there for you as well. Um, I have a list of recommended producers. So um, for each of our need to know wine regions, as well as a handful of others, um, but this is just a guide. It is by no means exhaustive, but it's really meant to be there to help you guys uh, if you're looking, when you're looking for wines um, and you're not sure, you know, who are the better producers or whatnot. I mean, this is just a little bit of a guide for you in that regard. Um, additional Spanish wine resources I've put. Uh, a new list together with all of the appellations and their grape varieties and their style, wine styles uh, with the websites for the DOs. Uh, we have style sheets for all of the regions. I have a full list of all of the Vino de Pago, um, which uh, your manual itself actually, I mean, is short by about eight now because there's been a ton of changes there. Um, and then also uh, we've uh, uh, Spanish wine resources with books that you might want to take a look at for supplemental reading, uh, podcasts, uh, some videos, those types of things. <clears throat> but again, the one thing I want you guys to remember and to realize is that your manual is your guide for your exam. Okay, so if you do read something in another resource that that is you know, more current or as conflicts for whatever reason, don't hesitate to bring it up in the instructor Q&A form, but your manual is, your exam is based on the manual that you actually have um, that you'll be using for this course. And then finally, we've just recently up updated um, a whole folder of winemaking graphics that has graphics for um, making red wine, white wine, rosé wine, and sparkling wine. In your portal as well, I also have a graphic for you when you're studying in chapter nine and you're studying Sherry, I have a Sherry graphic for you in there as well. Um, I'm going to add it into this as well, so you'll have them all in one place, okay? All right. So what does the course of study look like? So in your portal, when you scroll down, you will see <clears throat> uh, 10 weeks. You'll, be, you'll see 11 of these blocks. 10 of them are for each week. And the final one is for your exam. Uh, at the top of week one, you will see um, two buttons and it says open all or close all. 
What I encourage you guys to do is to open all and then refresh your page. And what that does is it allows you to actually view everything in a single scrolling opportunity. Otherwise, it gets cut off. Okay. And so you'll see each of the weeks is, the, is broken down for you guys here. And this is actually your course that we're looking at. Um, and then when you click into one of those courses by that little uh, triangle on the left hand side of the box, it will break down for you and deeper dive you into exactly what you'll be you should be studying during that week. So, for example, here in week five, you'll be doing a review of Catalonia um, on the on the webinar. Um, then we'll do you'll be self studying uh, the Central Mediterranean coast. It'll give you the information for the webinar. This particular week, as a matter of fact, um, I have actually <clears throat> had to move the class up um, by a half an hour because I'm flying out of town uh, shortly after that. But this way, it allows me to get the, the class in for you guys. And, um, and then it has the information on your, uh, your Zoom call. After the course, uh, after the webinar is done, I will actually go through and you will see here you have, um, I upload... A, a recording of the of the call like I'm going to do today of the webinar. I also record um, an audio only because I have had a number of students who actually really like if they're going for a walk or whatever. They can listen to the to the uh, to the webinar as well if they're re-listening to it, whatever. And then I will also upload all of the slides from that week. Uh, I do not upload them prior because I really want you to pay attention on the webinar that we're going through and, and engage with questions. But you can download it after the fact if you decide to rewatch it, take notes, whatever. And then during your self-study part of the of that week, you have a number of, of things to help you uh, prepare for the upcoming webinar and, uh, and obviously for the upcoming exam. You have a set of learning objectives, and I highly encourage you guys to download and to read the learning objective prior to reading the chapter because they tell you what is and is not testable. Uh, you have e-learning modules uh, with quizzes that go throughout. You have um, a set of flashcards and some pronunciation exercises. And all of those we'll look at here in just a bit. So the curriculum itself um, actually covers all of the wine regions of Spain, from the larger ones like Rioja uh, to the smaller ones, for example, like Emporda in Catalonia. Uh, the first chapter is your fundamentals chapter. This is where we will uh, give you um, a, a fairly broad <clears throat> view of Spain uh, by Spanish history and wine histories. Um, you'll see geography, climate, soils. We'll talk about the major grape varieties that exist throughout the country. Uh, viticulture, winemaking, wine styles, as well as a very important Spanish wine law. Uh, that's a really important section because it does help set the stage for the study for the remainder of the course. Then the rest of the course is broken down into nine regional chapters, and they have we have 17 autonomous regions in Spain. Uh, all 17 are covered here in the nine weeks. And you'll see them as you go through in your manual. Uh, these are all uh, labeled exactly by chapter for you. And they're actually in order of the of the way the manual runs as well. So that's the way that I actually like to teach the online course to kind of keep you in a consecutive mode. So this is your schedule. Again, this will be up online for you guys shortly. Uh, you may want to go ahead and put, you know, just drop, uh, you know, drop something into your calendar. But again, um, I will send a reminder out uh, a day prior as well for you. So the manual um, that you can see here, for those of you who have it, uh, you've probably already spent some time flipping through it. And for those of you who don't, you will have it shortly. Uh, the manual is about 315 pages. It's full color. It's got a ton of graphics and photos and um, and maps and everything really uh, help meant to uh, enhance your study. Um, Everything is in uh, each of the regional sections here. You'll see you've got uh, like history, climate, location, soils. Uh, a lot of these photos are photos that I've uh, actually taken in these places, uh, which again help to enhance the study for, for you guys as well. And you can see it's, it's very well laid out. We've had a lot of uh, super comments on the, uh, on the manual and how easy it is for people to, to follow and to understand. Maps. We have great maps here. Uh, you know, it's really hard sometimes 
you know, when you look at maps from for wine regions to get something that is is easy to follow and is easy to uh, understand as the ones that we've had created for us. Uh, this is actually, uh, this map is a little more current than the one that's in your manual, but it is available for download on your portal. This is the one that actually lists all the current 24 Vinos de Pago in Spain. And uh, so if you wanna download it, just so you have that list handy um, and you can see where they are on your map, that, that would, be, um, that would uh, probably be recommended um, in my part. Then we have regional maps. So here, for example, this is Rioja. And uh, the regional maps are created really to kind of give you an exact um, understanding of where the boundaries are for these wine regions, um, as well as giving you information about the most important features of in, in and around the regions like uh, rivers and mountain ranges and borders and even uh, primary cities in the region. So as I mentioned before, you do have uh, online study assist here. Uh, this, these are the e-learning modules and they are available 24 seven for you. They are, you can bookmark them if you want. And so you can hold a place, you can come back when you go through and you can take little quizzes as you go through, you can retake those quizzes as often as you want. And they always shuffle the answers. So it's never the same exact thing twice. So it does give you the ability to, uh, to kind of retest yourself as well. So you have flashcards and uh, the flashcards uh, are really meant to kind of help test your knowledge. Unlike the exam, the flashcards basically ask a question on one side and you have to know the answer on the other side. Um, the exam itself, which we'll talk about in a bit, um, is multiple choice. But uh, I really encourage students to really dig in and learn um, as much as they can about the flashcards, because it, that way you automatically know it and you'll recognize it when you see it on the exam versus just going through the process of elimination. We do have pronunciation exercises. So for those of you who, um, who don't speak Spanish or um, who aren't familiar with how, um, how things are um, and how they're pronounced, you can go in here. Now, this gives you breakdowns of sections. So you do have to listen to the section with it, um, but they're not that long. So, um, so Matthew wants to know, is it possible to print the flashcards? Matthew, it is not. Um, part of that is because we've tried to keep it, you know, fairly proprietary and to keep it interactive for you on the portal. I will tell you, I have had students that have created their own flashcards um, in a program called Quizlet, Q-U-I-Z-L-E-T. Um, so that would be an option, but uh, unfortunately we, we don't allow the download of, uh, of the cards. And then, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to do live review webinars. We will do eight webinars um, upcoming here where we will co cover the 17 autonomous regions over the remaining nine chapters in your manual. And then week 10 will be a final review where we will do a very a big cross-regional review, get you guys engaged and, and trying to understand how everything works together, not just regionally. Now, the, the webinars last will last anywhere generally from around an hour to an hour and a half. It just depends on the amount of content. So for example, next week we cover two chapters. So it's a little bit longer. Um, you know, in those weeks that we cover two chapters, they do tend to be a little bit longer. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the exam. So the exam is an online exam. It is uh, proctored. And uh, what will happen is um, you, when you take the exam, uh, you will actually have to show your video camera and show around your room so they know you're not using any resources because it is a closed book exam. It consists of uh, 100 multiple choice questions. Um, and for those, uh, you know, and I, and I suspect that we're going to have a very engaged group this time and everybody is going to, uh, to get through this together. Um, the minimum score to earn your Spanish Wine Scholar credential is 75%. But we do offer um, an honors category for 85 to 90. And anybody who scores uh, 91 and above, you will earn the highest honors uh, on your certification. Now, when the time comes, um, we'll get, as we get closer to the end of the course, we'll talk more about this, but you'll actually just reach out to schedule your exam a minimum of three days in advance. And at the very bottom of your portal, as you get uh, through the all of your modules in between, 
what I would encourage you to do, we have two, I have two things in there for you guys. So I have a sample test, which has 25 questions on it. Um, by the end of your course, I'm hoping to have um, an additional 25 in there for you. And, uh, and the second thing you have is all of the flashcards randomized. And so the way that the flashcards work right now is each portal has their own section. So if we're studying Catalonia, it's only flashcards on Catalonia. At the very bottom, <coughs> excuse me, at the very bottom in the exam information section, uh, we do have all of the flashcards from all of the sections and they go in random order. So it allows you to test yourself all the way around. Okay, so you are responsible for, uh, for all the content of each of the regional chapters, including history, location, topography, climate, soils, viticulture, et cetera. And, uh, you know, these are the kinds of things that we'll look at in chapter one, especially. Now, I will highlight certain things that um, I would encourage you guys to know for exam purposes. We'll talk about things that aren't testable but they help to fill in a lot of the, the gaps as well. Uh, I mean, but we'll talk about major grape varieties, uh, viticulture and winemaking, as well as Spanish wine law. And then when we move to the, re to, uh, the, the, the re rest of the manual, we take a look at everything from a regional overview perspective. And uh, we will talk about, and we'll, again, we'll go through these acronyms next week. So you know, don't stress about it if you don't know what they are right now. Um, but these are the wine appellations and we will study each wine appellation itself uh, gets broken down regionally by these, these topics here. So you'll see uh, climate and geography and soils, grape varieties, et cetera. Now, as you go through your manual, uh, next to the names of certain wine regions, you will see this little triangle with the exclamation point in it. I mean, this is your clue that this is a need to know wine region, and you need to know that this, you need to know this region and the content in there for your exam, okay? Now, again, we will talk about your exam and about the types of things you need to know and those types of things, um, but as you go through, I encourage you, even though a section, uh, uh, a region does not have the, the little need to know icon, at least read it one time. Now, when you're going back through a second time or a third time or whatever, and you're restudying for your exam, then you can focus on those, but we highly encourage you to read the entire manual through um, the first time through, okay? Um, Margarita wants to know how much time is recommended uh, to spend on self-studying per week? You know, it's a great question. Everybody's a little different. And I would encourage you with reading um, and then kind of going through your materials in the portal, uh, generally we see people, people anywhere from three to five hours. Uh, now, a nice thing is, is you can break that up. You can read the manual one day. You can go in and do some of the study assists on the portal one day. You can, you know, do uh, e-learning one day. So you can break it all up. But generally, re we recommend anywhere from three to five hours a week study for that. Suggested wine. So um, we do not have a tasting component on the exam. So um, it is not, you could technically go through this course and never taste a Spanish wine. Now, it is not recommended that you do that because as you're studying these wines and you're taught, you're, you know, you're studying the regions, it's always helpful to kind of get contextually how the wine fits into this region. And we'll talk a lot about that as we go through. In your portal, at the very top section, you have a spreadsheet that is actually, uh, this is a snapshot from the very first part of the spreadsheet for uh, next week's class. And it's just a way to give you an opportunity to see if you can, if you can find some of these wines and try them. There, you don't have to find everything. Um, but if you look at it here, you'll see, for example, in the chapter on green Spain, I have priority one and two. Priority one wines are the ones that you're highly encouraged to actually source and taste. So, for example, 100% um, Arbarino from Rias Baixas, okay? And that's generally, I mean, th some of these wines are going to be much easier to find versus other wines. 
Um, and so uh, the, the priority two wines are the ones that are a little bit more difficult to find. And again, if you don't find them, don't worry about it. They're just ways for you to get an opportunity to kind of taste through some different or unique styles of wine um, as well. So how is the exam weighted? About 65% of your exam is going to come from the major, from the chapters that have more of the major wine appellations in them. So for example, Green Spain, um, where predominantly we'll be covering wines from Galicia uh, and from País Vasco. Now, obviously, we talk about Asturias and Cantabria in there as well. I mean, but most of the wine regions are actually in, in the first two. The Duero River Valley in Rioja, in Catalonia, in the Meseta, as well as Andalusia. And then the remaining 35% is going to come from chapter one, from your fundamentals chapter, as well as the, the other chapters, the Ebro Valley, the Central Mediterranean Coast, and the islands. All right, so what is not on the exam? And this is a, a, you know, I like to do this at the beginning so that you guys aren't getting bogged down in details that you don't need to be um, trying to focus on or trying to memorize. So dates that the appellations were founded. Um, in each of your need to know sections, you will see, I've put in there when the region was founded, a number of other pieces of information. Um, I do that so you get an understanding of how old the region is, uh, those types of things. But there are only a handful of dates that I will encourage you guys to remember, and we'll talk about those as we go through the course. You don't have to know production yields or wine styles percentages, minimum alcohols or blending formulas, um, as well as the little bullet points on elevation, rainfall, or area under vine. Um, and part of the reason is because, for example, area under vine changes on a regular basis. Um, so we want you to, you know, if, when it comes to elevation, for example, it's helpful to know that this is a high elevation region versus a region that might be at sea level, but you don't have to know the specifics of that. <laughs> Mar Margarita, all those sleepless nights in vain. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so how to study. Um, so as I mentioned before, read your learning objectives before reading the chapter. It will help you prepare for uh, the chapter that you are reading. Read the entire chapter at least once. Read the whole chapter. When you go back, then go ahead and make, you know, you can eliminate reading uh, or rereading the sections that are not need to know. Uh, reread, highlight, underline, make notes in the in the margins, whatever it is that, that works for you. Utilize online resources that we've given you, we've been talking about already. Try teaching it or explaining it to someone. Some people learn better by teaching it. And, you know, you always do. Um, and I can tell you that from experience. Make lists. Um, I have people that uh, download maps and, um, you know, and fill in the maps and those types of things. Uh, reviewing the vocabulary and the glossary. Uh, attending the live webinars. Um, and if you can't, it's okay. We understand the, um, we try to make these as accessible for um, the majority of people as we can. But of course, sometimes you have work or you can't make it. And that's why we always upload them uh, for you to watch later. Um, and then finally, finding an online study partner or organizing a tasting group. As I mentioned before, some of my classes, they've done that. And whether it's two or three people or eight or 10 people, um, you know, everybody, you know, people, sometimes it helps to kind of bounce things off each other or, you know, let's all bring a wine from, you know, that you've, that you wanted, that we're tasting this week and let's talk about it, those types of things. Now, don't make assumptions when you are studying for the course. So, for example, you know, I, you know, I work in the wine business. I, you know, I sell Rioja or I sell Roberto de Duero. So I know the region, so I don't have to study it. <laughs> don't take that attitude. Um, I don't need it for my job. Don't assume what is or is not important. Uh, you really do have to actively study this material. Um, and this is why taking notes and even creating your own flashcards or those types of things are always helpful for you because it puts you in the process of actively engaging the material. All right, so what is next? 
So next week, we are going to cover chapters one and two of the fundamentals chapter, as well as Green Spain, where we will cover four autonomous regions. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, next week's uh, session will probably be about 90 minutes. If you have to drop off, again, don't worry. It's not a big deal. You guys can always follow, um, pick up on it later. And uh, and so we'll go through um, you know a lot of the history, and I'll cover a lot of history in the first section, and then just focus on certain pieces of history throughout the remaining uh, parts of it, or places where they're, they're different, or where they deviate <clears throat> from the norm. And then in Green Spain, of course, as we talked about, we'll be covering that northern section of Spain across the northern coastline. All right, so that is it for kind of getting you guys into this and kind of finding, you know, a way to get started. Um, I am always accessible to you guys. You will find as we go through, I absolutely love Spain. Um, so sometimes I might even get off on a little tangent, um, but generally I can bring it back to talking about wine. Uh, my mother's side of the family is from Spain. My grandfather was born in Barcelona. And so it's, um, you know, I, I have a very, um, I have a very, um, deep uh, spot in my heart for Spain. So.